Okay. So, of course, we start with some definition and uh, with uh, the application that uh, we start, let's say, to see what kind of application we can build from the semantic web concept. Uh, and we will go on to the first part of the stack of the semantic web. So, of course, everybody knows that the web is full of data. And uh, this data comes from, uh, for, can be used by our humans, but are also used by machines sometimes from application. And more and more there are requirements that uh, application can directly look into the data that the web makes available. So uh, we are trying to uh, transform the web, not only for humans, but also for machines. Of course, uh, each of us is able to find information for when they want to travel, so hotel information, flight information, or company information when you want to, to send your CV somewhere for work. But uh, what is, and this is very evident, what maybe is less evident is that uh, the more and more application that you use uh, in re reality rely on availability of the data on the web. For example, uh, this is just an example. If you want to build uh, a music site, for example, this is case studies from BBC. BBC uh, has, uh, gives uh, the recording of all his mm -hmm. programs, of every, of every topic from nature, from, uh, from music and so on. And uh, it, uh, besides giving the, the, the recording of the transmission, it adds uh, more and more information to enrich the site. So for example, if they, uh, they, they broadcast some music by Ed Sheeran, you can go in the site and uh, add, uh, for example, a direct information on when Ed Sheeran will come, about, about when he will, is going to, to sing in Italy or wherever else, or you can uh, know, you can go directly to his biography or uh, on uh, any kind of uh, deepening or any other information that uh, is, uh, is going to be of help. Of course, a, a very nice website is very important to attract people and uh, maintain their, uh, their, um, their fidelization on the site. So if you want to build a music site, of course, the, the, the basic choice is that uh, there is an editor that search the web for new facts. Mm? Nobody does that now, of course. But uh, at the beginning, humans uh, did this uh, sort of this browsing of information about music. So. The problem is that very soon the site gets up to date. The, the editor should be continuously uh, looking for new information, in fact, uh, delete what is uh, up, uh, out of date and find uh, new information. So this is not, of course, a good choice. Uh, a slightly better choice is that there are, um, you can write code, okay? to scrape uh, uh, the sites, a uh, list of sites, uh, and find the useful information. There are available uh, tools for doing that, or you can write your own code. But again, this relies again on uh, the fact that you run this code uh, very frequently, you delete what is old, uh, and, you co and you try to include uh, this, uh, this, uh, this information. So, is uh, of course, uh, and uh, nobody guarantees you that the site that you are scraping are updated. Okay, so uh, again, it's a little bit better because there is less uh, human work, but it's not uh, the best uh, in any case. Uh, you could use APIs uh, in which uh, at least uh, other sites expose the data, that, uh, uh, but again, uh, it's not the solution because you have to always be uh, aware of what they are doing. So this, the, the choice of BBC mm, uh, is that they use existing public data sets. For example, Wikipedia, Music Brains as a database, a data set uh, 
that uh, includes uh, information about music, artists, and so on. So there is somebody, and it's, uh, let's say, socially built, so everybody can contribute to this database. And this database uh, co includes uh, everything that uh, people want to, make, I mean, uh, to share about music. So there is interest in the community in building and maintaining this data set. And so everybody that is interested in updated content can go directly to these data sets and, uh, uh, and you are guaranteed that uh, this uh, is updated content. Hmm? And this data set uh, can be, this data can be extracted using HTTP requests or standard queries. So it's uh, every time you uh, have to access a data set, you have standard technology that help you to include the data in your site. So practically, the web of data, we start from a web of documents, a web for human, but the web of data, of data is a sort of content management system that is able to find information that is available on a database in some way. Of course, it will be not a relational database as we are used to, because we need different technologies with different way of representing data, but the idea is the same. There is somebody that maintains this data, an application take this data, okay, without extra effort, in a standard way. Mm? So everything that you can do, what BBC does with Music Brains for their uh, music programs, they can do for other databases for their nature programs or any kind of programs they have. So the technology is the same, the database is different, but it's very, it's very, very uh, convenient approach. This is just, it's, it's just interesting, for example, uh, during in BBC they warn you that if you are a, no, a, let's say, not very known artist, it's very important that you update your uh, entry in the Music Brains database because they say when, you, when we broadcast one of your songs, mm, there will be an automatic link to your, your Music Brains uh, entry, in, in entry. So if you are not uh, willing to, to contribute to this database, you are warned that uh, when you, they click on your name, they will find nothing, which is not a very good um, way of presenting yourself to your audience <coughs> if you're an emerging artist, okay? So, uh, and we make it very clear, we are not uh, editing anything directly, we use databases to get information. Mm? This Music Brains is a database that has a sort of, also, a, let's say it's also, uh, relational, but it's also a support for, for the web of linked data that is as a different way of representation that is called RDF, uh, which we will talk about very, very soon. Okay, so, uh, well, this is just um, a few words about uh, what BBC said, uh, why the, the semantic web uh, technology is very important. Uh, you can write it, it's not uh, central. So, the idea is that uh, we rely, our applications uh, rely on, uh, on data that are made available by, by someone else. Mm, so the idea. So, uh, so this data um, should be written in some format and accessed with some kind of technology. So the, what we will see now we will see uh, how we can represent data and how we can access this data and also how can we reason on this data to extract new knowledge. Hmm? Okay, so the semantic web uh, now is intended as a web of linked data. We don't uh, pretend uh, to write applications that understand human language like uh, was in the uh, in previous year when the, the hype was on uh, natural language processing or in semantic technology. So um, the idea is to find a way to 
describe the content on the web so that it's uh, machine readable and not only human readable. Uh, it's important also to, to understand how to find this information, so how to query this kind of data with a language that is very similar to SQL, but is of course different and how we can extract new knowledge from the knowledge that has, uh, this is, um, let's say, uh, expressly uh, represented in the site. Also because uh, the idea of linked data is that you have partial knowledge from different parts of the web. And if you integrate uh, this partial knowledge, you can have a much broader knowledge uh, on, uh, on, on, on what you're interested of, okay? So, semantic web technology should enable people to create data stores, so big, large um, content of data, big vocabulary so that uh, there is a common understanding of what the data are about, so it's to do with uh, taxonomies, uh, thesauri, ontologies, to understand the real meaning of the data, uh, and rules for handling data, so extract new knowledge when you, when you need it. So um, just to, to show you, well, the web uh, that we usually see is made of opaque resources, so that uh, you, when you don't enter in a web page, you don't know what it's talking about, Mm -hmm. then you know what it talks about uh, if you understand the language in which it's written. So most of you understand uh, English, no, all of you understand English and uh, all of you most uh, understand Italian or will understand very, or Spanish or whatever, but maybe not, nobody of us uh, knows uh, Japanese, so we don't understand what is written in Japanese. So it's sort of a opaque resource and unless you enter it and try to decode it with your own competence. And the links, uh, again, are also opaque. When you follow a link, you may have some guess of what is on the other side. For example, if you click the name of uh, uh, an artist, you expect that you will find a biography of this artist, okay? But it's, it's your guess. And it's your guess because you are a human and you understand much more of what is written. But if you look at uh, the point of view of a machine, of an application, it's completely opaque structure. It's a, a list of resources, of notes, that you can don't know what is about, and a list of links, uh, and you don't know the meanings of these links. The idea is that what Semantic Web is not about uh, resources, not about documents, but about things. Things uh, is everything. Mm? Means that a thing can be a web page, okay? can be um, a document, privacy rules, can be data, like the latitude or, longi or longitude of a given place, are people. So, is not necessarily something you can, it's everything you can say something about. So if you can speak about something, I can speak about myself, you can speak about uh, what you're doing in the morning, about the breakfast, about uh, milk, uh, everything you can speak about is a thing. And therefore you can, uh, you want to talk and describe the thing, so it has to be represented. For example, here you can see that uh, the, the, the things are these notes. So Jane Doe is a person and is a thing. Uh, Jane Doe has an email and uh, the link is not a generic link but has the meaning of the link uh, coded in somewhere. So the link between Jane Doe and uh, his, her email address is called mail. Then Jane has a telephone number and Jane is attending a cool meeting. This is something else. And by the way, the cool meeting is chaired by Jane. And this meeting has a location in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, which has a latitude and longitude. So they coordinate, especially the geographic coordinates, and has a postal code. 
and uh, there is a known page of this meeting that describe uh, probably the um, uh, the schedule of the meeting and uh, there is also policy associated to the meeting and so on so here is much clearer not only for humans of course everything for the web of linked data is made so that is also human readable and it's very large effort also for being human readable and understandable but can it must also uh, machine readable so the application can find useful information about uh, what is link uh, about what is link about what is the resources about and uh, if you notice uh, this uh, let's say email as a prefix uh, p m g this has to do with a sort of the vocabulary of what is uh, what of the words that you are using so we imagine there is a vocabulary and let's say a, a dictionary of properties of people and we call it p but there's also dictionaries that's about uh, locations and here we call it g so that everybody is able to contribute to this global knowledge by let's say proposing their own properties but also within a given uh, let's say framework a set of words Otherwise, if you use latitude, uh, it's being defined differently of someone else. So there is a sort of, uh, we say, this is the property email of the set of property that is called P. Mm? Well, this is just uh, some preliminary remark. By the way, a, a very a curiosity, this is a picture uh, this is a drawing by uh, Tim Berners-Lee in 1989 when he was inventing, let's say, the, the web and it was a, his idea. The original idea of Tim Berners-Lee was a web that has semantics. So he it, it, it drew it a different kind of notes according if they are documents, if they are ideas, if they are uh, uh, let's say hierarchical system and so on so he had the idea of differentiating the meaning of the notes and he had uh, um, labels to the links so this idea of semantics was uh, uh, w was the, the real beginning of the web but then of course practically it was too difficult and it was so it's so much interesting making the web live and uh, working and a very important, uh, let's say, um, content, uh, let's say, uh, repository for everybody that has that want to share information that it's simplified in the web of uh, of documents that uh, that that we know. But idea, the original idea was the same. So what is the semantic web uh, or the web of data? Uh, it's simply a collection of the standard technologies. Each one has a given name and they integrate each other for the, um, the common goal they have realized the, 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 to, to create the semantic web. Uh, but it's a suite of different technologies. Uh, these are some of them. that. Each of us has a, a specific goal that can be uh, representing data, uh, can be representing vocabularies or ontologies, can be helping in uh, let's say converting HTML pages in another format, can be querying the semantic web, or can be reasoning on the semantic web. So, uh, the idea is very simple, but the devil is in the details. So uh, each of these technologies has to be integrated uh, and uh, is uh, being developed separately because it, uh, it's very focused on a given problem to solve the problem. And it's a very dynamic uh, environment, so new technology uh, disappear appear and old one maybe they are not used any longer and so on so each of them has a uh, just uh, uh, the new logo the new it's a few years that is like that but before it was different uh, is this cube hmm? the meaning of the cube 
is because uh, cube you see three faces of the cube, so it stresses the the basic foundation of the semantic web that is the triple concept. So everything you say about a resource is made of a statement that is composed of three parts, a subject, a predicate, and an object. And uh, if, if I say Berlin is the capital of Germany, this is a statement. There is a subject that is Berlin, a predicate, capital, is a capital, Germany is the object. So everything I can say is composed of three parts. And it's represented as a triple. Mm? So this, uh, this kind of representation. So the number three is very important for the semantic web. And this is the reason for the logo. And this logo is not a closed cube, but is uh, this, uh, the peeled lead um, shows that you have to open your box and share your data. So it's an invitation to open your data and make it available to Semantic Web. That means that you have to expose your data in a standard format so that everybody can read your data and uh, also contribute to your data. So this is the interesting part of the logo. Coming to the stack of the components, uh, this is uh, what is uh, uh, what? Well, let's say uh, some of the technology, foundational technologies of the web, and we can distinguish in uh, a part that has to do with representation. So we want to extract data, expose data from our sites, from our documents, for our application, and have it has to do with this um, this kind of this part of the stack. So. Here we will see how we can uh, expose data to the external using this uh, RDF that data interchange format based on triples, statements that are subject, predicate, and object, which uses partially the syntax of XML, which is uh, simply an interchange format that's uh, very diffused, and start through from uh, basic technologies like URI or uh, Unicode set. We will go. So it has to do how to represent data, how to say in a machine readable way that Berlin is the capital of Germany, that uh, I work at Politecnico di Torino, that you are a PhD student. Okay, so it needed uh, a common format. Then. There is a part of technology that has to do with, with reasoning. So, is it written that uh, I, uh, Laura Farinetti works at Politecnico di Torino and someone has written that Politecnico di Torino is in Torino? Someone else can say, Laura Farinetti works in Torino. It's not, not written anywhere, but it's very simple uh, extend, extension of knowledge. And uh, if uh, somewhere else is written that Torino is in Italy and, Turin and Italy is in Europe, and if they want to li the list and that Politecnico di Torino is a technical university, if someone wants a list of people that works uh, in technical university in Europe, I appear in the list. Mm? This is very simple reasoning, but it's something that is not written explicitly in any web page, possibly. So the idea of reasoning has to do with uh, uh, building on the data representation um, rules that allows you to extract new knowledge. So this is one of the tasks of semantic web. So representation, reasoning. Another task is query, querying. So extracting information, raw information. Uh, this is the last, uh, let's say, goal of the semantic web that has been introduced. The first, uh, uh, in the first year when it appeared, um, there was not this concept of querying because there was uh, lots of, uh, let's say, optimism that uh, was reasoning with data was easy. But then they realize it's, it's a very complex task. And so having, um, let's say, a simpler task like querying, so asking 
uh, like you do with, uh, with a relational database. Uh, for example, asking what is the number of people of, uh, of Berlin is the query that you can ask on a database. Uh, also on, uh, let's say, on data exposed on RDF. So uh, it's another task and we will talk about that. So in, in this course we will talk about representation, we will talk about reasoning, we will talk about query. We will not talk about trust, which is another important goal, but it's very, it's very complex and goes a little bit beyond uh, the, 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 the time that we have. Um, and also because it's um, in a, let's say, the, um, not so well uh, defined now. Trust has to do with the fact that uh, the, the, the web is full of information, but uh, not that information is not always uh, true or important or, or, or let's say, given by um, authoritative people. So the, 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 the idea was to build a network of trust in which uh, if I say, let's say, the statement, hmm, if I say a statement, I trust myself that I'm true. If uh, Fulvio Corno tr say a statement that Berlin is the capital of Germany, I trust Fulvio because I know him, let's say, 90%. So I have the idea that 90% of what he says uh, is true to me. Or, and, uh, but Fulvio trusts someone else, uh, Maurizio, for nine, 90%. So I trust Maurizio for, let's say, 80% because I don't know him directly, but I know that Fulvio trusts him. So the idea of building a network of trust. Hmm? And we will not talk about this. And then uh, we will, the, the interaction, so be, up building application that are based on, on this. Mm -hmm. In, uh, okay. okay, so uh, practically the part that is called the web of linked data has to do with these two technologies, so the representation and the query which is something that uh, is growing and growing today because it's, let's say, it's the most uh, practically useful part of the semantic web because it gives uh, the application a uh, lot, lot of data and uh, possibilities. So it's where the hype is now on the semantic web. Okay. So, Semantic Web is a common set of technologies that have different focus, but they contribute to a common goal. And uh, the idea is that they can be used uh, for different applications. Some uh, use all of them, some use only part of them. Um, the idea is to develop new technologies that uh, encourage interoperability between this knowledge. Uh, a co coherent set of technologies, so um, incremental application, base for innovation, so there's lots of space for contribution. And a uh, standard set of technologies, and the idea is to, op to be open and uh, reduce as much as possible proprietary uh, solutions. So, mm, okay very open. So what are semantic web solutions like? Uh, well, the central part of every solution is the representation of the data in abstract format. The abstract format is this triple format, RDS, in which you represent everything you know as a state, a list of statements, hmm? very simple statements. St uh, subject, predicate, and object. This statement can be represented graphically by these graphs. So uh, we'll see this, but if I want to say Berlin is the capital of Germany, here this node for me is Berlin, and this node is uh, Germany, and here is a predicate in which is written capital. Okay, it's capital. So, and then I can say something else. Uh, for example, that uh, uh, John Doe here lives in Berlin, okay? 
So I can say, okay, uh, in which uh, country does uh, John Doe lives? Uh, I can say he lives in Germany because I know this is living in Berlin and then I know that uh, Berlin is the capital of Germany. So it, the idea is to write statements that say things that are true, possibly, well, of course, and then to traverse gra graph in the simplest way or to merge graph and so on. But every ca application or solution of semantic web has to do with representing data. Then, on the lower day la level, you have many different technologies to build this data representation. Of course, you can write your own code on RDF using your keyboard, but it's not a good idea. So there are lots of technology that allows to extract information, for example, from relational databases of other kind of databases or to extract knowledge from HTML documents or PDF documents and so on, or to annotate existing documents so as to simplify this process of creating statements. Okay. So it has to do with the data, existing data, of course, the problem is to use existing data and not to develop everything from scratch it would be impossible and, uh, and even think about this, okay. And then application, what do? They, extract, they can extract information, they can visualize uh, statement, they can, they can query, they can do okay, so intelligent search uh, in which they simply maybe um, coordinate data from different applications. For example, uh, taking into account what are your preferences, uh, what are, are usually you, where you, when you go to, to travel, where you like to go and uh, what kind of hotel you choose and what kind of company, air company you choose, integrate all this data and provide you with a concrete proposal of uh, your personal uh, travel agenda, okay? So we integrate uh, uh, in an intelligence, let's say, way, information that is available on the, on the web. Uh, I just want to show you something okay about this data if uh, you all know wikipedia so if i search wikipedia for example berlin okay i want it in english because we are so here is a description of wikipedia gives you why not why don't Ah, okay, there is some disambiguation this morning. Uh, Berlino, okay. I want it in English anyway. Uh, okay. Anyway, it gives you a lot of information about uh, the city of Berlin, okay? And uh, a human reader can very easily read it, uh, follow the links uh, that are in evidence and so on. Uh, beside Wikipedia, there is a database that is called DBpedia that has information of many, uh, that are in many pages of Wikipedia in a more structured way. If I go to, if I here call uh, DBpedia Berlin, okay. Here, this is more structured. It's not a relational database, but has to something to do. For example, gives you uh, the area, a short description, give you an uh, idea of about uh, what is the country, what is the elevation, uh, the, popula the total population, total code, and, and so on. So it gives you a more structured approach on what is uh, uh, Berlin. So this is somehow also human readable. You can 
if you are interested, you can understand what is written there, but it's also machine readable because you all these are statements. So a statement is that Berlin subject has a flag, and this is the predicate, and it is the object. Okay? This is a picture in SVG format that has the flag of Berlin. Hmm? This is uh, in our page, but in DBpedia you can access different kind of formats. For example, let's say a very RDF uh, simple way of representation, which is triple. And here has to do, let's say, a triple is an RDF representation in which uh, it's evident it's, uh, there's a uh, uh, the uh, okay, this Paul Gehrard Jan has birthplace Berlin. So these are listed all the statement that are in DBpedia, and this of course you can write code that collect this information. Not only you can write code, but you also can. There uh, we will see uh, in one of the next uh, lectures how work of this SparkQL works and now we have an endpoint in which we can query DBpedia for facts. Okay. So the difference between human readable Wikipedia and DBpedia is uh, I think it's clear DBpedia also have data that application can much more easily uh, get for, uh, for, for, for the purposes. Okay. So and DBpedia is only one of the many, many RDF uh, uh, databases that you can find. Here, for example, you can have... The idea is that we want to represent uh, statements. Okay? Statements should be represented in a machine-readable way, which is code, and this code is, can be written in different, in many different syntaxes. Okay, this is in XML. The other was in this triple, the turtle triple, and so on. We will, you will see some example later on. But the, what the semantic web encourages is that uh, uh, everybody maintains databases of data. Not only, but everybody that writes HTML pages adds uh, with some of these languages that we will see, add extra tags in which it's very easy to go from here to there. I can write a page that is human readable, but also has integrated RDF statement that can be extracted and populate uh, a database. Hmm? So, this is, this is a, just a nice picture, it says that it's this, almost the same stack, but it separates nicely what are the concepts and what are the technologies. So, uh, the, the semantic web starts from the web platform, so the technologies are uh, URI, HTTP, Unicode, and so on. Then, it works on formats, because has to build this uh, common uh, information exchange layer, which is RDF, technologies RDF. But these are all formats that allows you to start from uh, relational databases, HTML, or whatever you have, you want to build this database of statements. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, once you have this uh, statement, you can query them with SparkQL. So make inter my queries like, what is the capital of, of Germany? Okay? But you can also use a more complex mo uh, model <coughs> for knowledge representation like ontologies or thesauri. So these are this OWL, RDFS, as course has to do with knowledge representation. You can write rules for reasoning and of course write the logic, the programs that reason thanks to this uh, representation of the model and so on. Hmm? Then there is this uh, 
proof and security layer that uh, gives you the trust of the, the application. What is uh, also interesting, well, of course, that uh, linked data, mm -hmm. so what is more used today, mm, because it's the simplest way of, of giving, um, of being useful, uses only a few of these technologies. So you can build semantic web application that are that can use only only a few of, of, of these application. Hmm? Okay. So uh, okay, the semantic web has to do with enabling machine to understand documents and data, but not human speech and writing. So nobody wants to do na natural language processing. Hmm? So it's based on uh, another important uh, uh, concept that are metadata. Mm. Uh, so what are metadata? I like the, I like this uh, this comic. So now that should clear up a few things around here. So the idea of metadata is that uh, you want to describe in a readable and possibly the not um, ambiguous way everything you are talking about. So if you give a label to everything, everybody can speak the same language and can understand. So I, can, I put the dog and the cat uh, and now I know who they are. So, But the idea of metadata is that uh, we can think of a resource, uh, let's resource, let's think, let's think of about for example, any of the web page you, or web service that you usually use um, can be of any format, okay? The description is a sort of post-it that I put to the resource, and for example, the resource that is this uh, web, uh, the, the video that I'm producing now about uh, the um, semantic web introduction, has a title, which is uh, Introduction to the Semantic Web. Uh, this, is, uh, this resource was created, which is not true because it, but it's an old date, but uh, in, on a given date, uh, the author is myself. I can say that the resource uh, is suitable for PhD student, and uh, the resource has to do with computer silent, knowledge representation, and metadata. So I can describe my resource. So, the resource can have any content, any format. Mm? So it uh, can be video, audio, text, uh, PDF, whatever. And so the access method depends on the format. If uh, on the format, both um, machine readable and human readable, so I can read um, a access a video if I have an application that uh, shows videos and I can understand what it's talking about if I can understand English otherwise I don't understand it okay so the standardization for application is practically impossible because there is uh, already a huge amount of existing information which is in hundreds of human languages and uh, it's in hundreds of computer languages or formats so it's impossible to think about uh, um, a common format that each application can read and each human can read. And of course, uh, nobody is interested in, the, real, the vendors are not interested in standardizing anything, okay? The description is different. I can, the decision can be independent of the format. I can, uh, I had the metadata to video as well as on audio and on text and so on. So they are simply the comments of a resource hmm? and uh, the standardization is feasible in this way because I simply need uh, to, let's say, decide a format for annotation and a language for annotation. Hmm? So creating a standard language for writing comments uh, or this is semantic web is called metadata for uh, resource is feasible as is not uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice it's a nice opportunity 
um, imagine that you want to find it a very motivated in finding a resource on something on a, on a topic which is not very common and you find out that you can find a word document that is exactly what you're looking for but is written let's say in Japanese if you are motivated enough maybe you pay a translator to translate it because if you have very good annotation it's exactly what you want to know and you you probably want to invest in translating it but if you don't have a notation, you don't even know what is the value of the, what you're looking for. Hmm? So, uh, annotation are very, very important. So, the idea is metadata, what are metadata? Are notes about a resource. So, you can write it in a machine-readable way. So, you can think of representing that like a field name equal field value. So, for example, I can say uh, the title is Introduction to the Semantic Web, the date is that one, the author is this one, the audience is PhD students, a topic, and so on. So, writing in a machine-readable way, metadata, means uh, different kind of tasks. So, the problem to write metadata and associate metadata to resources are introduces at least uh, four different kind of uh, problems, opportunities as, one, as, as, you, as you want to call them. So, to make annotation you need a common language for describing resources so that everybody uh, can read this annotation. So, you need a resource description standard. Then, you need a common language for describing field names so you want to say you want to have let's say call name understandable and shared for describing a resource for example the title or the author or the date or <coughs> the audience okay and this has to do with metadata standard that says for every kind of resource what are the imposed important property of the resource hmm? Not only important, these are the property of the resource that you want to, let's say, stress, what you want to know the, the values, but also you want to have a common language to describe uh, the value of the resource, how you write the title or how you write the date and so on. Mm? We'll go into this with more details. And then, if you want to support not only the simple statement that you already write, okay, and it's very useful that you give to everybody so everybody knows what you know, but you would like also to support some reasoning. Hmm? Reasoning that means that if you write something about Berlin, you know that someone else will refer it to Germany, to Europe, uh, and, and so on. <coughs> hmm? So to increase the knowledge. So these are four challenges that uh, had to do with the semantic web but the, for, for the basics of the semantic web. So, um, to introduce RDF, this is the common language for describing resources. Mm? Because we want to say this resource, the title of this resource is uh, semantic web introduction. Okay, so we can write it with a very simple statement. Uh, mm? resource uh, blah 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 has title the semantic web introduction okay so um, the idea is to for the semantic web is to give this standard representation that is based on triples so this standard is called RDF resource description framework the resource is a URI I will tell you something about the URI. Retrievable or not means that a URI can be something that is on the web or everything I can speak about. So the thing I talked before. Hmm? I am someone that you can talk about. So I have a URI, but I'm not on the web physically. Okay. RDF is structured in statement. A statement is always a triple that says what is the subject, what is the predicate, and what is the object. 
the subject is always a resource, it's a thing, something you can talk about. A predicate is a verb or a property of the relationship, can be um, lives in, a, a verb, a property, uh, for example, has, uh, has name, can be a relationship, is part of, okay? So it's something that you can want to stress about a resource. An object is, uh, again, a resource or a, a literal string, a, a constant, okay? Okay. RDF is this idea. We are talking about statement, okay? And very often it's a very good way of representing it, it's a graphical way with these uh, two nodes and a link between two nodes. But of course, to be machine readable, it has to be serialized in a syntax, in a given syntax. So there are many different syntaxes um, to serialize this uh, state, to, to represent this statement. I showed you a couple of them, Turtle and uh, XML. It's simply a way of writing down in a machine readable way what is a statement. Hmm? Uh, okay, so RDF is a data, data model. It's a way of representing, it's a concept for representing data in this way. And XML is a syntax in which you can express the statement. Hmm? Okay, uh, just a few words about URIs. Uh, URIs are an extension of URL, uh, means Uniform Resource Identifier because a URL says two things. It identifies a resource and tells you where it is, so the, the, the address of the resource. A URN is a name that not necessarily gives you where it is, okay? URI is, uh, let's say, is, uh, includes both. Hmm? It identifies a resource, sometimes only saying it exists, and you can talk about this, and sometimes also because you know where it is, like a web page or a, 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 an application or whatever. So each, uh, each thing you are talking about has a URI. Hmm? And there is uh, this URI uh, uh, specification tells you how to code this URI in a machine readable way. We will, see we will see examples and you especially. There will be a lecture specifically on RDF next, uh, next uh, Monday with Fulvio. But just I want to give you some idea as an as example. So, for example, you can express in a very clear way a statement as a diagram. So, this URI, this, uh, the video that uh, I will put on the web, as author Laura Farinetti, okay? Then I can write in different kind of syntax, so in triple, so in which has uh, the, the predicate and then the subject and then the object, or can I use a very verbose syntax that is the XML that says this is our RDF statement and it's about this resource, this, this is the URI, um, sorry, this is the namespace, uh, sorry, says what is the vocabulary of RDF that, uh, that you include. This is a description about a URI. This is the name of the, um, of the predicate and this is the, the, the object. So it's simply a different syntax for writing the same thing. But the idea is to have statement, so represent the statement. Hmm? Uh, let's look at this example. This is uh, seen as a diagram, but this is a list of statements. For example, statement one is that this URI subject has title, okay, the glass palace. So I'm saying that this book uh, is called, is the name of this, the, the title of this book is the glass palace, okay. So this is one statement here. Then. I can say that this book uh, has been published in 2000 uh, and then has a publisher whose, uh, whose name is HarperCollins and the city is London. You will uh, see it much better next time, but 
sometimes the notes are not interesting particularly. Uh, since I have uh, the, the, the constraint that I use only very simple statements, hmm, if I want to say more than one thing about, let's say, a publisher, I have to, to introduce a new node that is called a blank node, and then I can make statement about this blank node. Let's say I say this book has a publisher that is, let's say, an empty node, uh, X, let's say, unknown X, and I say the X as city London and X as city as name Harper Collins. Hmm? This is just a way to represent uh, more than one property of one thing. Hmm? And then you the, the can say that it has an author and the name of the author is this one I have on page. So here I have a I've seen I've let's say I have uh, written a few facts about this book and I can make queries for example I can ask what is the home page of the author of the glass palace because I can traverse this graph and query and find this information but the potential of semantic web is not simple they're not as simple I mean it's much higher for example someone else somewhere else can have the written statement different that has the same URI. For example, here is the same URI as before, but I'm writing that uh, there is another book whose title is Le Palais de Miroir, which has as original title, an uh, original book, is a translation of this book. And uh, the author is uh, this one, and, in, and more, I have information about uh, the translator of the book which is Christian Bess, okay? Uh, here, I can make different queries. For example, I want to know what is the, your, the ISBN of the book that has uh, all books uh, translated by Christian Bess. Hmm? But this comes from two different sites. Some are not written by the same person, but if I realize this, I can merge, I can understand they are talking about the same book and I can merge this information. Same the, 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 basics, the basic is that the same URI means the same thing. This is the very, very basic, otherwise I could not do anything. Okay? So I try, I merge this, okay? just simply by merging the node. Mm, the simplest thing I can do. And here I can make more interesting queries. For example, I want to say uh, what are the all the translation of uh, what what are the translation of the, the glass uh, palace book? Or I want to say uh, give me the the address the, the the publisher of the original uh, book uh, that has been translated by Christian Bess. So I can increase my knowledge by putting together very simply just one note. But then I can do something more. For example, I can understand that even though they have different namespace, uh, that they have a vocabulary, author of the namespace F of the vocabulary F has the same meaning as author of the namespace A. Okay? So I can merge also the, the link. Hmm? And so I get also information and, uh, and also I can use other information that are available. For example, using a different um, vocabulary, which probably you know, fourth, friend of a friend, is a, a, a metadata standard, practically, that gives you information of about people. And so I can say that this author and also the, uh, the, the, the translator is a person. A person will have many other properties that I can add. So I can increase my knowledge by adding different kind of information coming from somewhere else. Not only, but I then I can use different available data sets, for example, I can use Wikipedia 
or DBpedia. DBpedia, as I said, is, is based, is the twin of uh, Wikipedia. And for example, I can add the, the, the DBpedia information of, of the author. Hmm? And if I add this information, then I have also linked all other um, books by the same author. So I increase, I enrich my knowledge base. Uh, and I can know, for example, that uh, it was uh, the, the place of birth, Kolkata. And then I can have all information if I add the DBpedia information of this place, all the geographical information about the place. So I can enrich it. I want to know uh, what is the, popu the current population of the place of birth of the author of the Glass Palace. Mm? So I enrich my, uh, my data by collecting and merging different uh, data from many data sets. Okay. So this is uh, the richness of using. And uh, OK. So I can add more and more. For example, if I want to use information that is available on ontologies for, or taxonomy for classification of different kind of uh, topics uh, of books. So I can add this information or extra rules uh, and so on. So I can go more and more and uh, work on that. Okay. So the first part was, uh, was, was that. So we need a, a way for representing knowledge. Hmm? Representing knowledge means uh, in, the, in the solution of the semantic web writing statement, very, very simple statement about uh, what uh, you are talking about. Hmm? Okay. So when we solve this problem, so you know we know how to represent the day, the, what, you, what you want. We still have the problem of um, what we say about a resource so that everybody found it useful because we can say everything. Because if we, I give you a, a paper, uh, a scientific paper, let's say, and I ask you, each of you, this, give you each of you the same paper and ask you as a task to annotate this uh, with the most relevant information about the scientific paper. I'm sure that um, probably everybody has uh, described as a title and it will be the same for everybody. The author will be the same for everybody, but when we decide uh, what is important for you. Maybe someone write the topic, and when it says the topic, it says different kind of uh, uh, values for the topics. Other will write uh, the date and so on. So each, uh, each person, uh, when annotates something, um, practically uses a view of the word to understand what is important for him. Hmm? For example, here for this resource I'm, I'm talking now, uh, I just uh, suppose that the important things are uh, author, title, date, topic, and audience, for example. But um, field names uh, can, be, can be different. For example, I can write author but someone else can call it creator or maker or contributor or whatever it thinks about. So uh, there are probably synonyms or similar to synonyms. So uh, in a very simple task like this, uh, it's th there's also ambig ambiguity. 
Um, title is probably less um, ambiguous, everybody would say title, but again, if you have different languages, probably everybody is uh, tempted to use a word of his own native, natural language, native language. So, um, the date, um, should we say date, or we say creation date, or date of last modification, date of revision, and also date can, can be a different meaning for the date. So probably date is not enough. I need to refine my model to, um, to, to allow that you can express a life cycle of a document. Uh, audience. Uh, how can I, what is the, 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 the good way to say who is uh, going to read this or to, to the resource? I can say educational level, I can say destination, suitability, I can think of many, many different ways of expressing this, uh, this information. Okay? Uh, also topic can be topic, subject, subjects, uh, argument, arguments, anything. So the, the idea is that I have, if I want to be standard and to write something that is useful to everybody, I need to have um, a list of important uh, characteristic properties of the resources that I want to, to, to provide. Hmm? The solution here are the metadata standards. So when you annotate something, uh, you want to say about the resource what the standard tells you that is important to say. So the standards are, are many. There are some standards that are very general. For example, Dublin Core. I have it here. I don't remember if I have no. Yes, Dublin Core. Dublin Core is a, a, a metadata standard that has been designed to be suitable for every kind of resource on the web. So it's very, very general. Here in this map you can see the, the name of the, the tag of the metadata. So the label as we, the property, I don't know what to call it anyway. So when you have a resource, you have to say what is this title. Hmm? You have to say who's the creator, what is the subject, hmm? what is the description, and you can also uh, re refine saying the table of content and the abstract, add abstract and content. You can want to say who's the publisher and also who are, who are the other contributors because there might be the, the creator of a resource but then uh, has been added. The first uh, release of Dublin Core had only 15 uh, uh, properties, metadata, then and no, refi and no refinements, then a new version is more, let's say, refined, okay. Then you have the date, but you have uh, created, available, issued, issued, modified, accepted, and blah, blah, blah. So you can define uh, more uh, clearly what is the event uh, of, uh, of life cycle of a document. You can write a type, a format, hmm? Uh, medium to, so that has, can be either um, machine readable or human readable identifier. You can provide a source, so if this, if this uh, resource comes from a different one, you can provide it. Uh, what is the language? Uh, let's say what is the coverage, spatial or temporal coverage? For example, if you are uh, talking about uh, the history of mid Middle Ages of Germany, you can say what is the, the temporal and spatial coverage of the document and so on. So the access, the rights and the audience. Mm -hmm. And then you can write some relation with other documents. For example, as a version, has version, 
is replaced or replaced, so they are the, um, the opposite uh, requires as part of and so on. So, can, so you can define what are the relation with other resources. So the idea of the Dublin Core was to provide a common, um, let's say, framework for talking about anything that is on the web. So it's not really specific and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, what are the problem of the metadata is that uh, it's very time consuming to annotate it uh, by the author. The author usually uh, writes a document and then if you ask him to write also the metadata, it's, unless it's, uh, let's say, it uh, has to do it for some reason, usually try to not uh, provide the metadata. Um, all these uh, metadata standard, of course, don't require it to, you, you, they're not compulsory. You don't have to write everything. You are encouraged to write as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, in reality, one of the big challenge of uh, semantic web is to extract metadata from the content mm -hmm. in an automatic or semi, semi automatic way of uh, on, on the contact mm. and uh, okay so Dublin Core is very general and talks about everything of course depending on uh, what you uh, what is your domain uh, you want to have sometimes more uh, precise description of the resource for example there are standard metadata standards that uh, expressly designed for educational resources. I have a screenshot later on on this. It's called IEEE LOM. So they go into detail on the audience, on the difficulty level, on the topic, on the prerequisites of the material, on, the, on how to build a learning path using this educational resource and so on. So it's specifically written, it's many, many pages. It's specifically written to catalog uh, as best uh, as as, 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 as possible, uh, an educational resource, uh, or uh, the metadata for multimedia resource that uh, for images, for picture, for um, photographic pictures, for people, for example, a uh, fourth friend of a friend <coughs> gives you the property of the relationship between between people, or this one um, uh, metadata about uh, people competence, uh, technical, technical, let's say, professional competence, geospatial resources, uh, heritage or cultural heritage resources. Each uh, community of people that are interested in a given domain, in general, invest in writing uh, a metadata standard that says people how to catalog their data on the standard. Then the problem is to understand, uh, to, to asso associate this uh, metadata practically to the resource and to try to do some automatic processing of, uh, of the resource. Mm. Okay. And, uh, okay, so we suppose that we have a given kind of resources, a different domain, and we select a metadata standard for saying the important property of the, for representing the important property of the resource. Okay. And this, let's say, the easiest tasks. And then, so that everybody know what you are talking about. And this, in the, in the picture, I show, showed you before here, when I say a fourth person, this is explicitly written. Mm? It will be codified, machine readable. So I'm talking about this specific uh, node, the specific meaning, because it's in the metadata fourth, in the fourth metadata. So everybody knows what I'm talking about. Okay, about field values, sometimes it's very easy. For example, we come from ages of databases, so 
nobody has doubts about how to represent <coughs> a date uh, or sometimes simply the value is a string so we don't need to do much more else but sometimes uh, the string should have a standard format for example in case of an author we put the name or the surname and we put the initial and so on so there are um, doubts um, sometimes even for very simple tasks Ma when we talk about uh, quality for example we have to define uh, a common term terminology on how I represent the quality I can write high, medium, low I can write uh, uh, the rating from 1 to 5 I can write any value, whatever so that everybody that has to evaluate the quality has to know the range that has to be defined mm -hmm. when I say audience what can I write on the audience all possible values uh, and that's it when I write the topic can, how many topic I can write what is the language I can use for writing the topic so this is again another important task that has to be solved to represent data and this is uh, solved by again partially from metadata standards and partially from other uh, let's say concepts that are controlled vocabularies so uh, metadata standards for example here metadata standards often then don't write simply what are the properties that you want to stress but also what are the possible values that you want to 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 write this is this uh, ieee learning object metadata that catalogs um, educational resources and this for example gives you an idea so if you look at the, the there are different levels general level gives you practically most of the things that are already in the Dublin core of course they are always a um, way of um, <coughs> passing from one to the other uh, then you have something to about to the life cycle um, technical let's say educational for example gives you the, the type of learning resource uh, the difficulty the learning time description language uh, and so on suggestion for further use see that this is um, very uh, granular as regards the educational value of a resource hmm? and then the results the result and if you I have it here just to the, the document or the metadata document are usual, usually written in some kind of tables and uh, that explains what are the concepts and then there are tables in which they provide you with uh, the description of what is that for example the category one is general and then in 1.1 identifier ca catalogs and so on but gives you also information on the value space of what you are wh what you have to say so for example vabbè, uh, the data type of a title is a long string that means that you have to provide uh, the string and uh, also the the language in which the string is uh, is written mm -hmm. so it gives you also if you are compliant to the metadata standard you have to use uh, strings in this <coughs> format of course and then so on for example uh, lang is lang code looking for something interesting description or keywords for example also keywords have to specify the language in, in which the keyword is provided 
And uh, okay, so sometimes give you some advice. Sometimes uh, is, uh, for example, the structure of a given educational resource can have a value that belongs to a list of possible values, which is explicitly written here. For example, can be atomic, hmm? so had to be taken all together can be a collection, can be a, net, a network of, uh, of educational resources, can be uh, hierarchical in sense that has this uh, organization of content that is hierarchical, or can be linear. This just, just was an example, okay? So, uh, metadata standard already solve partially the problem because they define, and here, Okay, they define in many cases uh, what is uh, the standard that you have to use or what is the list of keywords that you have to use. For example, the role of a contributor can be author, publisher, and so on. Or when you stick, and um, the role is associated to a person, and person has to be uh, written with the V card syntax. Okay. Sometimes, however, uh, this is not enough because this realm tells you that you have to use uh, uh, as a topic a language string. So you have to define the language and the string, but this is not enough because if I catalog a resource with computer science or someone else uh, a catalog as informatic or informatics or uh, or whatever or knowledge representation you are not um, sure that you use the same language and also the same level of granularity because computer science is very broad I don't want them um, when I make a search I don't want all the resources about computer science but maybe I have to be very specific I'm talking about metadata and then some reasoner will see that if I'm talking to metadata I'm talking about either computer science or philosophy maybe okay so to to solve this problem there are different we have to talk about something that has been this was born much earlier than computer science, that is the uh, library catalogs. So to classify things uh, about different point of view with a common set of terms. So um, content classification, uh, group object about the subject. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Metadata describe object. A subject-based classification describe the subject, what you are talking about. And subject-based classification, well, this is a, a nice uh, uh, word from Borges in uh, the book of imaginary beings, uh, which I like, because uh, this is uh, his uh, idea of subject-based classification in which uh, they classify animals uh, in different categories. Uh, the, the animal that belong to the emperor and, ban and bound ones, uh, the animals that are trained, suckling pigs, mermaids, fabulous ones, stray dogs, those included in the present classification, so it's self-reference, those that tremble as if they were mad, innumerable ones, those drawn with a very fine camel hair brush, others, those that have just broken a flower vase, those that for, from a long way off seem like flies. So it's, uh, it's a nice uh, the idea of you can see the classification as you want to see it. Mm? But of course here we are more formal and we want a real classification, a real, um, let's say, way of classifying objects. So subject-based classification, here are technologies and here are the concepts. Uh, um, uh, here they are on a plot with time money, that means that it's very easy to write glossaries and 
not very time consuming so to collect all the list of possible ta ta uh, terms but if you want to organize a, dom a domain in much more um, usable and useful way uh, it takes uh, time and money ontologies are at the top of that ontologies you will see just a few words what they are then it will be part of a different lecture are uh, are terms that are grouped with uh, a given semantic meaning so there are different way of classifying knowledge that uh, can be more and more useful and more and more uh, time and money consuming so just uh, what is a con the, 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 the lowest level is the controlled vocabulary. Uh, the control that means that you cannot um, give any kind any value that you like, but you have to pick the value from a given list. That's why it's called controlled vocabulary. For example, you will not find the term informatics on the list, but you will find computer science. So everybody wants to talk uh, about the concept computer science have to select this term mm -hmm. so this is uh, already very useful because prevents the author from defining terms that have no meaning mm -hmm. or they are too broad or too narrow uh, from misspelling which is another common problem um, or uh, you can prevent different authors from choosing different uh, spelling or synonyms of the, for the, for the same time. So the, fir the simplest form is have a pick list. You have a list of terms and you select one of that. So this reduces ambiguity that are in normal human language, uh, homograph, homonyms, synonyms and so on, so that it's important that in controlled vocabulary each concept is associated to one word and vice versa mm -hmm. so and each word describes one concept which means that it's not easy to provide a controlled vocabulary but it's a feasible task it's not any way easy mm -hmm. it's not it's not easy in any case because also uh, um, guaranteeing that a concept has only one term that describes it and vice versa it's uh, it's not 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 completely tribal mm -hmm. this is the basics the taxonomy builds on a controlled <coughs> vocabulary because it again uses only a number of terms but organized in a hierarchy the idea of taxonomy dates back to, to Linnaeus work on uh, classification of zoological and botanical um, say organisms uh, so and uh, hi hierarchy is simply something that, that tells you given a concept who what is the broader concept the father and what the, are the narrower concept so the children mm -hmm. okay and uh, an example is this inspect uh, taxonomy that for example has um, about uh, the, um, as a, the domain uh, physics and engineering especially the physics and engineering like, like electrical engineering and so on so for example uh, this is, is just some screenshot uh, we have a different section for different uh, broad uh, topics for example <coughs> physics and then uh, the number um, a means uh, we are talking about physics and then nine means uh, uh, the, the broader level the further level we have a general concept uh, we talk on nuclear physics and so on and then everything has uh, can be well these are another electrical engineering and electronics uh, and then we have computers and control which is divided in computer general systems and so on a D, information technology for business, A, mechanical and production engineering, so, and so on. So, and then, of course, there is the lower level in which uh, gives you <coughs> more uh, details, more categories about office automation, communication, and so on. So, we can taxonomy organize in this way, 
it's a very it, it's um, it's something that uh, is a hierarchical structure. So it's a controlled vocabulary with hierarchical structure, in which the limit is that you have only two kind of relationship between terms: the, bra the, the father and the children. So fa the parent is a broader term. So computer science uh, is the father. Then you have uh, computer networks, and then under computer networks you have uh, I don't know, protocols uh, and so on. So the theory has improved uh, taxonomy in sense that as again start from a controlled vocabulary. Subjects are anyway arranged in a hierarchy, so the broader term and narrower, narrower term are two specific relationships, so maintains a hierarchical structure. But there are other few other properties, a relationship that you can add to a normal uh, taxonomy. For example, you can make notes, you can say um, that um, there are sort of use a uh, use for are sort of uh, synonyms for the same concept in which you suggest the use of this term or another term for the concept you are talking about. I give you an example very soon, or you can say there is that this is the top term for a given category of concepts or you can have a general relation with other concepts, with other, another entry, without uh, providing more details. So you can say father-son synonym practically or something, a relation which is not uh, broad, more broadly specified. For example, this is an example of uh, a thesaurus that uh, in which, for example, uh, you have uh, the term textiles hmm? and uh, you, uh, you here is a list of other concepts that are sort of synonyms so cloth, fabrics, textile fabrics, textile product, waterproofing of fabrics oh, well. and uh, we have the link to the to to a specific entry in the thesaurus, you can provide all the list of the children. So the narrower terms, linen, silk, are textiles, uh, tartans, and so on. And then you can say there are relation with other concepts. For example, fibers and materials, paper technology, textile mm -hmm. art, without specifying further what is the kind of relationship. Um, here, for example, fibers uh, is another uh, is related here, uh, used for fiber. That means that this is another synonym, other narrower terms, broader term is material, and so on, and uh, and <coughs> so on. Uh, if, for example, it, when you have uh, two concepts and two different words, let's say sort of synonyms, here used for uh, means that fibers is the preferred term. Fiber is written use fibers. This is the special relationship in which uh, you put together synonyms or sort of synonyms, different words that express a concept, and you explicitly say in this case which is which is the preferred term. Okay. So, uh, with respect to the um, taxonomy. Uh, it, um, it provides a general relation without going further into the details and uh, the idea of different terms that express the same concept and which one is preferred. One of the uh, um, technology of the semantic web uh, is COS, which means simple knowledge organization system that has a syntax in RDF format that express in RDF uh, the thesauri. So it has a vocabulary in which, uh, which whose namespace is COS, that is the, main, the name of this, let's say, language, this technology, and allows you to define properties of this object 
whose data are the, the, the properties of the thesauri. For example, here we have a node that is related to another no node and uh, this node is narrower than, let's say, what is economic cooperation, the term economic cooperation, the label of this node is narrower than economic integration. And uh, a oper oh, uh, let's say, and so on. Scope node gives a description, and so on. So it's uh, a way of representing in a machine readable way a thesaurus. If it's represented in a machine readable way, it means that they are statements that can be used to integrate existing knowledge taken from other database to make reason. To, to reason, to extract new knowledge thanks to this uh, organization of the domain. So if I'm looking for documents about uh, uh, industrial cooperation, I can, and my document has not been tagged with the term economic cooperation, I might look, give as a result also documents that talk about it in, in industrial cooperation because they are related in this taxonomy. So the use of uh, knowledge representation helps you to retrieve more interesting documents when we are looking some, uh, for something that go behind, uh, besides, uh, uh, further, than the word that you're, you're using in the search. So all these technologies, uh, thesauri, taxonomy, man, from Tesauri on, uh, practically are a way of representing a knowledge domain in a machine readable way, so that this knowledge of the domain can enrich uh, the, 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 the performance of the, of the application right, because they will find more information that simply by reading, for example, the text of a document. Mm. The last uh, and most um, sophisticated way for describing the word are ontologies. So the ontology, you can think of a thesaurus in which you have open vocabularies and open relationship types so that, for example, in, uh, in SCOS, uh, in thesauri, you have only this kind of relationship which has broader, narrower scope, uh, use, use uh, for, or relational uh, ta uh, of relation. In ontology, you uh, can write anything in your notes, so can be any kind of term, and the, um, the, the labels of the links can be anything. Mm. So defining ontology means defining all the links, uh, labels that you think are necessary and all the characteristics of a domain that you consider necessary. It's a large effort because it uh, needs the contribution of domain expert and uh, knowledge engineers that are able to extract uh, meaningful knowledge uh, and uh, cod cod codifiable knowledge from knowledge experts and to represent as, uh, let's say, maps to um, to code and uh, to represent what is uh, the, the word they are interested in. Of course, once everything is uh, represented as a graph, it can be represented as RDF triples because a graph, it's each of us uh, is, uh, if for example, is A means that uh, embryonic structure is an anatomical structure, this is a statement. Hmm? A statement was, um, in which the name of the predicates is absolutely free. It's open. It's dynamic. Everybody can. The idea is that everybody can contribute to the co common knowledge to build an ontology, and an ontology can be, let's say, accessed and uh, reasoned uh, to provide uh, and to be integrated with the existing data. So here is. I'm not expert on the domain, but anyway, head brain has a forebrain and a hind brain, part of, which is expressed as part of, which was not in the thesaurus, and uh, 
uh, D means develops from uh, and, and blah blah. So it rep it's a way of uh, representing knowledge. So uh, next step that you will see in the next lectures on Monday you, you will uh, detail much more this part and practically you will see RDF and one of the exercise that you will have to do not Monday or not on Wednesday is to do something on with RDF practical then we will see the, the queries SparkQL and the second exercise will be about queries the third exercise will be uh, about ontology representation writing an ontology so thank you very much and uh, see you next time. I click.